I mean, it's always the, the adventure of starting something new and seeing where you can build it and if you can have, and that dream of being able to have a bigger impact on the industry. This is the Vet Life Reimagined podcast. And in this episode, I have my friend, Dr. Bar Hadar. Bar is an entrepreneur. I greatly appreciate when he talked about moving the veterinary profession forward from the inside. He is especially excited to leverage thoughtful technology to improve animal health care. You will tell how his excitement grows to talk about Kumba, a digital platform that empowers mobile veterinarians to be more efficient. So we also talk a lot about what it's like to be a veterinary professional with a mobile clinic. So let's get to the conversation with Dr. Bar Hadar. When did you know that you wanted to get into veterinary medicine? So what's your your start story? Oh, start story. Let's see. I mean, I think, I don't know, probably similar to a lot of a lot of other vets, but as a kid, always, you know, loved animals, grew up with them um, from having uh, the parakeets as a kid to like um, ordering some uh, duck eggs and hatching them when I was in elementary school and mm. uh, to horseback riding. Um, to go into the zoo all the time and just uh, I think my uncle used to say I would just stare at the elephants for hours and and <laughs> um I always want to go back yeah so I always knew I want to do something with with animals and then in high school I did a trip but I, I studied uh or I did I uh volunteering for a summer in South Africa um worked on like a wild wildlife rehabilitation center and I was just like I need to do something with animals something with wildlife and so I was like well let me you know I really like medicine I really like science let me get into veterinary medicine and then kind of work my way into how I can make a bigger impact on animals worldwide. Yeah. yeah. And you, did you grow up in Hawaii? I grew up. Yeah. So I was born in Israel, but then uh, my dad's side of, side of the family is from Israel and then raised in Hawaii. Uh, mom's side is in Hawaii. So I moved uh, here when I was about three. Um, right. Yeah. And so you ended up going to vet school at Colorado. So Colorado. how did, how did you end up at Colorado? You know, applied all over. Colorado was, uh, I was really interested in going to Colorado. I had one of my mentor, my main mentor here, who's an ambul- ambulatory equine vet. He went to Colorado. And also, I guess a big part of it was, I don't know if you know of the Wichi program. No, what's that? Anyway, so Wichi program is, is they have Hawaii, since Hawaii doesn't have a vet school. They mm-hmm. have a, they have, it's, it's, they have like one called Wooey for undergrad, but they basically they have um, certain agreements with other schools, the West Coast schools. So like Davis um and washington oregon and colorado and if you'd accept it the state government will co- they'll cover a couple of the out-of-state portions so luckily i applied for that scholarship with the state i was one of the one or two or three of them that got it and so that really helped you know solidify the decision to go to colorado oh, okay um, that makes sense <laughs> but oh, i right, um, really? was very interested in going there though i had really great things about it and uh yeah had a great time loved it Awesome. So what was your vet school experience like? Ooh, um, you know, everyone <laughs> says like, oh, vet school was so hard and so busy and it was the worst time. I actually really loved it. I found like a super great group of friends. We all like were hard studiers, but loved to, you know, still made the time to go, you know, have like a balanced life and go snowboarding and do activities. And so uh, it was one of the best periods, really. I really loved it because it was doing something that I already knew I loved. I liked the science, liked the animals, had a great group of friends, good teachers. Yeah, overall, I had a very positive experience during vet school. I mean, it was busy. It was hard work, but it was just, you know, you got into your groove. You got into your, like, your study routine and you just kind of chugged along. Yeah, it was great. Well, good. No, I think that is important is to find the good support system, find good friends, build the relationship. So no, that's that's a great way to enjoy vet school. Now, you mentioned that your interests were like wildlife, um, but I happen to know you do something a little bit different now. So uh, when was the transition in vet school from like your original interest and, and how did that change throughout vet school? Yeah, let's see. So I came into vet school thinking I was going to do just equine medicine. That was most of my, and and with a dream to do wildlife, right? Wildlife, zoo. So, and then I think just uh, throughout vet school, you kind of get more of a varied experience. I did do all the volunteering in the zoo groups and the exotics um, programs. Um, Of course, hard to find jobs in those areas after vet school. 
And then coming back to Hawaii, there was limited equine, I guess, equine opportunities. So I kind of did a little bit of a mix of equine and small animal. And then, yeah, and slowly kind of just shifted over to small animal just because of the uh, um, lifestyle was a little bit different um, and more suited to what I was looking for. Yeah. And then kind of was like, I'm ready for a change. And so I was supposed to actually go work at a, a dolphin city facility in Arizona, which is now closed. My friend was working there and was uh, was uh, trying to get me to come out there and work with her. Uh, plans changed and for the better because I ended up closing down. So, and then I was like, well, I need some something different. Either go back to do a residency or do something. Always wanted, always interested in the innovation technology space. What's happening, you know, in the forefront of the vet field. So I went to the Veterinary Innovation Summit in Texas the second time it happened. And that's kind of how I uh, I met uh, Ken Lambrecht, a practitioner that's very motivated, tech forward and very uh, feline friendly. And then I met my now professor at University of Guelph. And that's how I um, got uh, started at the uh, epidemiology graduate program at Ontario Veterinary College and got to research all the things I was interested in, including like emerging technology in the vet field, health informatics, digital healthcare. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I got thrown into the, that poll. Yeah. Yeah. So vet, veterinary innovation summit, uh, the magic happens. So <laughs> right, exactly. So I went there being like, I need to change. I want to join a startup. I want to be like where things are happening and having kind of a bigger impact on, on the industry as a whole. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so a PhD program, and can you tell a little bit more about working with Ken Lambrick, who has a, a business called Healthy Pet Connect, and um, can you tell, talk a little bit more about, you know, you said you were, you were getting to do everything you were interested in with your PhD program, but what came of that? What, what were some of your learnings and um, your involvement with, you know, a startup? I guess it started off with an idea at that innovation summit happened to, then I applied within a couple months, moved from Hawaii to Canada, started this project. Um, and it was, uh, um, I guess, yeah, it was interesting to just do first time doing a clinical trial and writing a, a um, journal publication in the end, I guess was, what was exciting is we were able to turn that commercialize that and turn that into which now uh, something which will hopefully have a bigger impact on, I guess pets world or pets throughout the U.S. We started the, the research we did was looking into uh, how we can leverage technology for pet obesity, which, as many know, you know, over sixty percent of uh, the pets in the U.S. are affected by this. So something that really has a um, big potential to have an impact. Um, and yeah, and so Ken is super motivated. He was already looking into these technologies and looking into very passionate about this space. Um, and so teaming up with that kind of that side. Uh, was great. And now seeing how we can develop this system with a better telemonitoring app and how we can leverage these remote monitoring devices to kind of have more continuous proactive care instead of that episodic reactive care. Uh, yeah, it's been exciting. Nice. So when did your opportunity for another startup start? How did, was that also yeah, at the so, Veterinary Innovation Summit? Or is that? That wasn't actually, that started Oh, let's see. It's about 14, 13, 14 years ago when I oh. was. So, yeah. So, okay. So in between vets, uh, undergrad and vet school, I did take a year off. Okay. Part of that year off, I did some traveling and about half of the half a year of that traveling, I was in Israel and I was, I was volunteering as an EMT for the ambulance service there. And my now current partner, AL, he was a paramedic. So we had a bunch of shifts together. We stayed friends. And then uh, one day, you know, I told him I want to go into vet school. My plan is is to get in next year and then and and then work as a vet. And so he, I think uh, we kept in touch and he goes, oh, you're a vet now. I'm actually starting this mobile veterinary service in Israel. What do you think about it? Uh, what do you think about it? And and then, you know, what do you, th what do you think will work in the U.S.? And I said, yeah, definitely. So we, it was a mobile service. Uh, he basically you know, wanted some services. He just had a kid and was like, I don't have time to go to the vet. Um, maybe I can bring the vet to me. And then he started talking to people in his building and said, there's so many people here that would want it. He called one of his friend, one of his vet friends. They ended up coming. He like, he booked his schedule, figured out his route, did everything for him. And then the vet there, the, you know, the clients were happy, the pets were happy. 
And that vet was so happy because he ended up making more that day than he did in like, I think like uh, weeks or months in Israel. Israel vets make even less than in the US. Yeah. So then he was like, I think we got something here. Um, and so he was like, help me bring it to the US. We we were planning and actually bringing it. We were part of an accelerator um, in California where we're going to bring it 2019, 2020. Obviously a little hiccup happened. And so it kind of delayed our plans. Um, and so now we just recently, yeah, brought it over. That's fascinating. He has a really neat story. And what did you kind of learn with the pandemic? Uh, was that a time of learning or like, how are you able was, to? It of- was because I guess during that period, really, so we kind of uh, grew the operations in, at least with, with that startup, which we, which is called Kuma. We grew the operations in Israel, used that as kind of like a testing ground, uh, a little sandbox, figured out what worked, what didn't work. Uh, what clients really liked, what clients, um, what the veterinarians really liked, and kind of got it to a place where we're like, hey, this is a nice, it's starting to fit, you know, the the market here. And now let's kind of see how it would work in in the US. Uh, definitely people got a lot more used to, as everyone knows, you know, working remotely, working at home, um, having things come to their home, doing uh, mm. um, things more digitally, uh, virtual appointments. So doing all that, I think it really kind of helped bring more comfort to this area of mm-hmm. virtual care and mobile care and in-home services. That so. is really interesting. And it was so funny. Um, just this week, I saw a Facebook post from a friend who happens to be a breeder. And she okay. was talking about appreciating that her veterinarian would come to her to do all the yeah. puppy checks. So I, you know, I think there's a lot of different places that this could be beneficial to to the pet owners, not to mention sure. maybe an, uh, senior pet owners <laughs> um, when they can't get out as much or the cat who, you know, the last thing the pet owner wants to do is try to stuff that cat into a carrier. Um, so a lot of potential sure. for access to care here. So that's awesome. And then it really stuck out to me when you said the veterinarian made more in that you know, short little time period. So if we, if yeah, this definitely. is a win, 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 you know, this is fantastic. And yeah. And I guess, um, and our idea now has shifted. So we're, we're, so we're not like a mobile veterinary company. We're trying to, we're not trying to hire our mobile vets just to clarify. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to empower them. So we're trying to give them a system to simplify their, the pet care experience on their side. Hopefully that will help simplify the pet care experience for you know pet parents pet owners and and their patients right so and so we're giving them a system that helps do want to do all the admin work and help uh you know take the the scheduling the routing the client communication all that stuff that they don't really have a good a good uh solution for at the moment and help take that all off their plate so they can focus on doing the medicine um, and delivering good care and part of our motivation, our big part of our motivation is to see if we can a make this uh, make in home cat pet care uh, an easier thing to do, and to help give veterinarians, I guess, another outlet to uh, continue being a vet in in this world of you know burnout and and being overworked and uh, being underappreciated. So we're trying to say you know a lot of which we in Israel we we found a lot of vets that were working felt overworked getting burnt out at the clinic and wanted some some you know another option and so they're like hey maybe mobile veterinary uh businesses would be a nice way to have a flexible schedule be my own boss start my own business without the whole overhead of building a you know brick and mortar clinic and doing all that and so when we were able to give them a solution like look you can use our platform you can easily book appointments easily market yourself does the scheduling the routing client communication it was a much easier, I guess, start for them, not as scary. Mm-hmm. And so they I love it. And we put a lot of things in there that helps for, you know, uh, help build those boundaries. So we have the, you know, certain client communications can turn on and off at certain times. We even offer our teletriage service that helps with answer their client calls after hours or during the hours, help schedule for them so that they don't always have to be on and kind of keeping the, the vet's perspective in mind. That's really interesting. What are some of, we'll start with the good. So from working with the veterinarians so far, what are some of the things that they are saying they like the most about, what did they like about being mobile vets and in using Kumba? 
They honestly, I guess taking all the, when we talk to multiple mobile vets, they say one of their top pain points is just the back and forth scheduling. Am I going to be there driving at one point on a Tuesday and then just coming, having to come back there that afternoon or the next day. So they're like, you know, having your system cluster appointments into efficient schedules. So I don't feel like I'm just yo-yoing around town. They start, they love that. And then be able to just within the app to say, okay, you know what? I'm on my way. Text, you know, really clearly communicate with their clients when I'm coming. So they know what to expect. They're saying it's, it's, it's just helping them with that whole headache and then having to, you know, a lot of, a lot of mobile practitioners are solo. So they're kind of like one man shows, at least, you know, I did it for a period actually here in Hawaii. I worked as a mobile vet and it's just, you know, you're answering the calls, you're doing the appointments, you're doing. So it's kind of, you know, just to be able to like take that one headache off and be able to focus on what you're doing. Uh, at the moment with that um, with that one appointment, it's been a, a real relief for most of them. That's what they're saying. So that's nice. And, and you come from experience. You you've been able to experience what it's like, so you can kind of implement that in Kumba, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, what are some of the continued pain points that you hear right now for from mobile vets? One is, you know, most mobile vets now, high demand, they can't just, it's just trying to fit people in. I think most clinics are going to have that pain point, right? Yeah. Just trying to find the time to be able to see more clients. Everyone wants to be. And then I think with that added trust of, oh, you're mobile, you're, you're supposed to be available all the time, right? And so uh, just because they they feel like, oh, mobile is still a, or house calls are still a premium concierge service. So you should always be available when I want to talk to you. Um, why can't you fit me in today, even though you're on the road already? managing i guess triaging clients to be able to like when can i fit you in those those same day next day urgent appointments is still kind of something that's hard for for them to uh to work with and make that into an efficient schedule because i kind of come to the clinic it's like okay now you're you know this is an urgent case but you're an hour away how can i fit that in when can i put you in so i guess that's kind of yeah finding one system that does it all right because now it's they have Practice management softwares are more clinic or brick and mortar clinic focused, not as mobile focused. So they don't have those little, you know, intricacies that are are um, unique to mobile operations. And then another top one would be working, having to work with cases that they can't handle on their own. So a lot of the mobile ones actually have those big, you know, like they have a full on truck, surgical suite. They'll do still park. They'll do the surgeries. They'll do all oh, the wow. procedures. <laughs> They do like a whole, it's like a, you know, just a clinic on wheels, right? So some of them do do that. Um, and some of them just, you know, have like a, um, uh, a truck with some stuff in it. And so working, being able to work with other professional or other um, pet care providers. So like specialists, clinics, the groomer, the trainer, and that's kind of our vision for Kumba too. So we're starting off with like a single pain point with mobile veterinarians because we see that they're one of the you know biggest ones that need it. And then we're hoping to one day build a whole market network that we can kind of um, pull in a better referral system between pet care providers and make it a little less fragmented. And so make it just easy in one system, be able to refer to, like we were talking about before, uh, we have veterinarians that say, I'll go in and then I'll just, if I can just click a button and say, I want you know a veterinary technician to go get blood for me, they'll come in, they'll get the fecal sample, they'll pull blood for me, they'll send it out to my lab, I'll get the results. I'll follow up with my client. Okay, let me ref, you know refer them to the clinic A to get their dental. They can already I can already kind of figure out what when to schedule them. I can already send them over all the records. So I'm trying to build that that referral network and make that referral process easier. It's something that we have you know down the line on our roadmap. Ooh, that sounds interesting. And another question that kind of came up while I was listening was marketing. So yep. with a animal clinic, you can see it when you drive by, you can Google it. How do mobile veterinarians market their unique services? Good question. They, I think normal channels are going out. A lot of it is word of mouth. A lot of it is, you know, people will be seeing their, the, the truck drive by. I'm like, I saw that truck. Can you come to my house? So we'll get, <laughs> we get a lot of that. Like, yeah, I've been seeing you drive around town and I looked you up. Some of them Googling just, you know, a mobile vet and in their town. Yeah. And word spreads fast. I know when I was doing it here, I didn't even advertise. I was like, I just want to kind of grow slowly. And it was just, then I started getting too busy. It was like more because then it's like, this one a friend called it. So the word of mouth kind of spread quick. Once people kind of were like, this is an option and you can do it in a way that's not, you know, that's, that's comparable to what a price would be in a clinic. 
people are like, yeah, they're pretty happy with it and they spread the word pretty quick. So, so is what is the awareness like among pet owners that this is a available type of service? It's a good question. I think right now it's still limited. I think it's growing. Mm-hmm. Um, but still limited. Most people still view it as a um, like a premium concierge service, and it's still not as widely available. So a lot of them are like, oh, I probably won't be able to get it in uh, an appointment sometime soon. So there's still, I think, the awareness is starting to grow, and that's what we're hoping with now. With if we start to make it easier on the veterinary supply side and show that this actually can be a service that can be done efficiently, it's more than you know. I think back back in the day, there's they're more, oh, if you're a mobile vet, you can only offer certain services. You're only going to go there and do a vaccine. And you're only going to do a quick checkup. And now the services that, you know, we're able to provi- provide with, you know, the, the whole mobile van units, you can do advanced procedures. They can do surgeries. They can bring an ultrasound with them. They have, you know, advanced remote monitoring devices to be able to monitor remotely and kind of do telemedicine appointments in between. So I think mm. with all these added, uh, you know, this has increased the, the um, services that they can provide. So I think now just getting clients, getting that word out there, like now there's more services available and it can be just like going into a clinic um, price wise and service wise. So I think that'll start to increase. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like the vet can be as flexible as possible. They, they can, they can really design what they want to do. So they could decide to only do senior pet appointments or they can decide to be, tech on wheels <laughs> if they wanted to that's really yeah really yeah, we have i mean we have we talked to mobile vets from all the walks exactly you have ones that are doing tech appointments you have ones that's doing end of life you have ones just you know i want to just do part-time uh you know just kind of wellness appointments um to one that i want a full-on truck and van i want to do everything yeah we have part-time part-time we have some that are like you know what i want to do work in a clinic for part-time because i still like the clinic experience i want the you know all that and, but then I want part-time my own business. Well, I'll have my own clientele and I'll have some wellness appointments there. And, and that's actually worked great because a lot of them are like, you know what, if we need some advanced procedure, I work at this clinic on, you know, two days a week, come to me on a Tuesday. And then they could follow up on the mobile house appointments on a Wednesday and Friday when they're out on the road. Um, so kind of getting that hybrid work portfolio has been, yeah, kind of a benefit that a lot of vets see. Yeah, yeah. So what has it been like going from, you know, veterinarian, traditional in a clinic working to now entrepreneur. What what do you enjoy about starting uh your own business? Oh, uh good question. I think it's been I think I mean it's always the uh, the adventure of starting something new and seeing where you can build it and if you can have and that dream of being able to have a bigger impact on the industry. And yeah, and I guess the kind of flexibility to to kind of take things, you know, take things where you think the best way is to go. So kind of being, yeah, so having that independence and and uh, working with others in the startup tech innovation space, talk to people like you and figuring out, okay, what else is out there? What are the trends? How can we be part of that trend? How can we lead, be part of the, I guess, leading group in the industry to take it where we want to go and I'll let. Yeah, Ari does not just follow other other people in other industries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Moving the profession along. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Moving the profession along. And from the inside, right? We need to get, yeah. I think we need more. There's not always, I guess, most of my friends at Vet Score, you know, they never, they're, they weren't, business wasn't their, their main interest. So I think it's, it's uh, kind of nice to work with those that are like, yeah, let's see what we can do from the inside and how we can push this profession forward and improve it. Yeah. Vets, listen to vets. <laughs> um <laughs> So I had I was I had one other question that I had forgotten there for a second, and and that is community. So one of the things that it can happen as an entrepreneur, it can happen as a clinic vet. I mean, um, loneliness and, and feeling isolated, and the need to bounce something off someone else that that even slightly understands you. What about? mobile veterinarians is there a community for mobile veterinarians who can talk to each other about what's working what's not you know that kind of thing is there such a thing yeah there actually is pretty uh um, pretty tight community actually and there's a a bunch of uh there's a couple facebook groups with uh thousands of mobile veterinarians and very active people are you know always bouncing ideas how do you do this how do you do that 
tips and tricks on how to do things in the house and how to do things alone, right? Because sometimes if you don't have a tech with you um, or you're not at the level, you're not at the scale to be able to afford one. Yeah, what kind of in-home services we can provide, um, remote monitoring systems. So there is, there is a, yeah, there's a whole, like there's Facebook groups, Instagram groups. There's a bunch of um, ways to connect with others and get those tips you need. And we've even been talking to, and we we're hoping to be able to, to kind of um, add to that as well add to that community and make it easier for people to start it and run it and bounce ideas off of other people. And so that's what we're hoping to build within uh, this kind of Kumba network, uh, Kumba network too. And there are services like we have Eve Harrison. She's a mobile veterinarian in California and she's uh, she has like a house call Academy that yeah. helps. Yeah. So if you're a mobile veterinarian starting out, or even if you just are like, I need some help on where to go, how to, even navigate things like getting my DEA licensing and legal stuff and how do I start and where do I start with pricing and how do I build my boundaries? So she, she's a good resource to people too. Like, how do I start? I, I I need to do something different. I want my own business. So she's been great. She has her own academy. She set up a mobile conference, uh, the first one recently last year. Yeah, so there are other groups and there's some other franchise groups that are like, look, we, can, we figured it out, how to get your suppliers, how to do this. We have events set up. We have a software for you. And so kind of making it easier for people to to get into it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Cause I, I think it gets to that point when it's overwhelming because it's a that's a lot of moving parts. Right. It's it's kind of like being an entrepreneur, right? I mean, you're yeah, it is. Exactly. starting from yeah. scratch. So that's great that there are uh, communities out there and support systems to kind of walk you through it. So that's great. For sure. Yep. Yeah. So you talked about what you liked about being an entrepreneur. Uh, what are some challenges of being an entrepreneur from you personally? <laughs> what are some of your experiences? Yeah. I guess others would say the same thing. It's the it's the, uh, the ups and downs and you never know what's going to happen some days, you know, right? So where is it going to take you when you, you got good days? Um, when you think this is going great, everything's going well. Other days where you're getting some, you're hitting some roadblocks and some issues. People didn't like this. I mean, to raise more money, you need to do that. You know, you have all those kind of uncertainties, right? I think is the good and bad, right? You're like excited to you because you don't know the potential can be, you know, endless, but at the same time, the uncertainty of where it could go, you know, how much traction you can get. Am I really helping people? So you, I guess those are kind of yeah, the challenges of that. And then juggling everything, right? Because there's always endless amounts of work and anything. But um, <laughs> of course, when it's your own startup, you feel like it's like, oh, you can always be working. I'm never working enough. I got to do more. I should be building it faster, stronger, better. Um, that sounds very familiar. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm sure you know, right? With your, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I know how passionate you are about this. Uh, we've had lots of conversations before. I, I even remember a conversation where, I mean, you were putting every dime you had into these endeavors. So um, thank you for that. And a lot of entrepreneurs, I do believe at the end of the day, we we do want to make impact. We really want to help a lot of people. So with that, that heart, um, and you have a platform here on the Vet Life Reimagine podcast, um, what are you observing about our profession and, and what would you like to, to say to our profession? Oh, I think that uh, it's nice to see that everyone's now focusing on you know how to make that profession more sustainable and uh and a and a uh i mean it's always a fulfilling job but how do you make it more sustainable and how do you make it more exciting to work again so you stop the burnout you stop all those you know mental health issues and i think that's something that i that I'm, I'm glad to see as a trend now let's focus on how can we make it better for us and not just you know always having to focus on you know, everybody else and kind of focus on what's good for you, what's good for your work environment, what's good for your team, what's good for, um, yeah, I guess the industry from the inside um, and make sure that it's something that we continue doing and improve on uh, to help deliver our services for others. Yeah. If, if we aren't healthy and being at our best, then we definitely can't give our best to, to our, yeah. our patients or our clients. So yeah, it's very good. Yeah. I'm thinking, uh, and I'm hoping a lot of these new technologies can help us kind of uh, can leverage those and kind of take a little bit off our plate and help us make things more efficient and be able to deliver better care. Yeah. All right. Well, are you ready for the final four questions? Oh, final four. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> um, so first question is, what is something that people get wrong about you? Oh, what is something that people get wrong about me? Oh, man, that's hard. I have no idea. Uh, I have, yeah, that's something I would have to, I would have to ask others. Okay, even you can know. think about it. <laughs> okay. Maybe the second one's easier. Uh, okay. The second one is, what is a hidden skill or interest you have? Well, a random one is I just, and I, this is the first thing that pops to, to mind, so it may not be the best one, but um, I started learning how to, like pick locks and like open uh, I don't know yeah so for some reason it was just interesting to be able to like you know that's one it, it was picking locks and like trying to open different things um without a key it was always an interest and I guess a better one would be which which I would find myself doing when I was studying for tests would be to read body language and like uh, verbal cues so I used to go into like uh, all these like forums and read, how do you break down certain micro expressions? Um, mm. Like Paul Ekman, which was, uh, I think is famous about like breaking down like these universal micro expressions and reading body language and how certain verbal cues in certain ways mean different things. I always found that fascinating. So that's something that I always am like working on and looking at. Yeah, uh, no, that's awesome. Have you heard of Vanessa Van Edwards? No. She does a lot about micro expressions. She has a couple of books. Um, I'm in her program called People School. Nice. And yeah, so you might you might be interested in, in Vanessa Van Edwards. So yeah. That's cool. cool. I remember one of the conferences I went to and it was like they had all the, the medical speakers and then they had one which was she was a body language expert and she was like talking about ATF and so she had that one. I ended up going to that one the whole day. She was like, <laughs> how could you use it? She works for like with ATF and FBI and CIA and, you know, all that kind of stuff and how to like find terrorists. But she was like, you guys can use this in the exam room. Super fascinating. And she was like, how many of you watched uh, um, uh, Lie to Me? And then they're all like, we have these questions. And then she even was like asking some questions, breaking it down. Uh, and I wasn't the last two people that got it right. And she was like, okay, one of you two are are going to get, uh, whoever wins gets a like a free you know course. They can come out to Washington, D.C. and do my course. Um, but she ended up picking the other lady, I think, because she was older. So she was, <laughs> I think she's like, oh, you're a younger student. I'm going to take this older lady. But in any case. So. You have more time to learn. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, just fascinating. Yeah. That is interesting. No, that's that's a very important human people skill to to learn. So awesome. So third question is, what is something on your bucket list? Something on my bucket list. Learn how to fly. Ooh, pilot's license or pilot's license. I started one in undergrad, ran out of time, ran out of money. Um, but eventually I want to learn how to fly. Yeah. That's very cool. To kind of go, I love traveling and I love uh, kind of you know adventurous things, and so I think being able to fly, you know, where I want when I want would be would be awesome. Yeah, hop right back over to South Africa and exactly fly out there, <laughs> work, you know? work with that wildlife. <laughs> with them, you know, yeah, exactly. Work with the wildlife and the air. That'd be that'd be awesome. That'd be so much fun. Very cool. And the last question is: What is something you are most grateful for? Grateful for. Probably, I mean, it's just probably common with most, but I guess just the great support system and community and network that that I've, you know, yeah, that I have and built along the way. So good family support. That's always, you know, obviously wouldn't be here without their support. Good friend support now within the industry and kind of going to more conferences and meeting new people, you know, all the great, great people, people in our industry like you and others and all around there. And I think it's just, it's just, yeah, it's really nice. And it kind of, it's motivating to see everybody else with the same passions as you and the same energy. And um, yeah, really makes it, really makes it uh, more exciting and, and builds a passion within myself as well. You have an impact in this profession as well. Thank you for joining me in this episode. Also, thank you for your support. One of the best ways you can support a podcast, make sure you find me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening and give a great review. Now, if you're listening on YouTube, which is also a fun place to, to visit the Vet Life Reimagined podcast, make sure that you are subscribed and share it with someone you know who would appreciate it. And until next time, take care.